everyone, welcome back to Let's Talk. My name is John. And my name is Matt. And we're doing a joint 4K Blu-ray review for 2003's The Core. But first, before we dive into that, if you are a fan of 4K Blu-ray reviews, movie reviews, some tech and game reviews along the way, then nothing helps the channel out more than by you liking this video and subscribing to the channel. So me and Matt, we're both really excited for this movie to come to 4K. It comes to us from Paramount Pictures. It's directed by John Amell. And I used to really like this movie. I, I used to really enjoy it. It's a fun little a disaster film. A di disaster guess. film, like like a, in line with like a Roland Emmerich film, but definitely not as good. And that's saying mm. something. And after we just literally finished watching it, me and Matt haven't talked about our feelings on the film yet. And Matt, what did you think of the core on this rewatch? Well, every time we say the core, I just think of that scene from Episode One, Star Wars Episode One. <laughs> the the leader of the Gungan says the planet core. <laughs> oh, really? I was just thinking about like Scream Put 6. Put that clip in here. In the planet core. Cool. You know what I'm talking about, right? Yeah, I do. What and are you actually, about it's, Jar Jar? it's funny because one thing that this movie and Star Wars Episode 1 have in common are the great CGI effects. Well, I actually think the CGI was much better in Star Wars. I like, don't know. By about leaps that. and bounds. Because <laughs> that's probably my biggest complaint with this movie is the amount of bad CGI. If it was only a couple scenes, then I'd be like, all right, I get it. But. You know, this, I always say, like, the very early 2000s is falls victim to really bad CGI scenes because they just, like, I guess they had some sort of breakthrough at the time where I guess they thought it looked good and they just made almost the entire movie in CGI. And this, this might have been the worst I've ever seen as far as CGI goes. But don't let that take away from the movie because the movie itself is a fun ride and I wouldn't say you're on the edge of your seat. But it's an entertaining watch and you do get kind of hooked and you want to see it played through. I think it's a tad bit long. I would have shaved maybe 15 minutes out of there and it's somewhere, you know, some cuts here and there. And uh, other than that, I enjoyed it for the most part. Um, well, as far as the visual effects go and the CGI, you know, I just think it's that classic Jeff Goldblum line. It's like, so preoccupied with whether or not they could, they didn't stop to think if they should because I just feel like this is, there were certain scenes where it's like, that didn't have to be CGI. There's a whole room with a big giant drill in it that easily could have been done practically, that they just felt the need to do CGI. That just drove me nuts. And as far as the film goes, it features great actors like Aaron Eckhart from The Dark Knight, Hilary Swank, two-time Academy Award winner, Delroy Lindau, Stanley Tucci, like the, the guy, guy from the new guy, from the new guy and uh, Rat, was he in Rat Race? He wasn't in Rat Race. Uh, what was that? Road Trip? I actually thought Hilary Swank was pretty damn bad in this movie, if I'm being 100% honest. <laughs> Almost no emotion in any of her line delivery. The best actors were Delroy Lindo and Stanley Tucci. And That's I, the cigarette guy? Cigarette guy with the hairpiece on because he's usually bald. And Delroy <laughs> Lindo, you know, that's <laughs> that's Weston Dianetti to me. I, I love that guy. He's in a bunch of stuff. He's a great actor. And yeah, Aaron Eckhart, too. Like, he was okay, but, you know... That's not Two-Face. That's not Harvey Dent. No. no. And the second act, I felt like it just dragged a well, little bit. Well, that's what I'm saying, yeah. where the movie got a little long, right? I would cut more than... It's a two-hour and 15-minute movie. I could have cut... long. I would have cut 35, 40 minutes out of this and maybe got it down to a 90-minute movie. And, because how many offensive. false endings do we have where it's like last-minute stuff or we got to, you know, leave the guy... Like, all stuff you see in disaster movies, like, you know, get to the end. Like, even after we complete our mission, we have to now, uh-oh, uh-oh. Are we gonna be able to get back? And then last second with that, and then wait, did they survive? No, oh, well, let's see, hopefully they did, we'll see. And then all oh, they did, what a big shocker. I'm but a little more forgiving than John is. Uh, I love the disaster films, uh, I like stuff like this. I remember really enjoying this, but I always get this one confused with Deep Impact, with ir which ironically enough, we're getting a 4K of that pretty soon. Which also is from Paramount, I'm pretty sure. No, that one is Shout Factory. So, okay, so actually when we or get to... I the, could be wrong. The Core had a Shout Factory Blu-ray before this. A Shout Select. A Shout Select. And, and Deep Impact was just released by Paramount on their own. I looked that yes, up. Yes, I have Deep Impact on Blu-ray. That was a cheap Blu-ray. I did not have The Core. So I get them confused. I don't remember which one I enjoyed more. I, I remember, I, I think I like Deep Impact. I hope I like Deep Impact more than The Core. Because not that I dislike this movie. Paramount. For deep impact also 
Oh really? So yeah. neither of them are shout factors? Neither of them are shout factors. They just had a shout select at least. Okay, so that's where my confusion was. Mm -hmm. But they're they're very they seem similar, but I know they're not. Yeah, well, this movie's more comparable to the movie Sunshine that came out, I believe, in 2007. While Deep Impact is more comparable to Armageddon, which you know asteroids hitting the Earth mm -hmm. kind of deal, where the core is more like getting the core of the Earth started up. Because we didn't even tell you guys the synopsis for the film because. The, what happens is is the core stops spinning, which is causing our with electromagnetic layer to start to fail, which is causing all these electric storms, electricity to fail, and we got to get that motherfucker start going again. So a lot we, of problems. So we get a big giant drill. We're gonna drill to the center, and we're gonna detonate five nuclear bombs, and that should do the trick. And then throughout the entire films, obviously, they are met with seven to ten different roadblocks that prevent them from doing this mission and you get to see that all on your screen in beautiful 2003 cgi <laughs> <laughs> yeah so it um there's got to be a, some nostalgia here for some people i know i was pretty nostalgic for this film i remember the trailer very well the trailer yeah, I there was a dvd that i put a lot of miles on that this trailer was on and i don't remember what dvd that was I don't know. I just have a very distinct memory of uh, like being excited to see this movie. Actually, like yeah. especially at the time, I thought like I like sci-fi movies, and mm -hmm. I would say this is more like a like, yeah. you know, like a, it, they cost seventy-five million to make. So I mean, it's not like they have it's like a mid-budget, but you could tell like because of the CGI that you know obviously they filmed everything on sound stages and everything and like green that. Green screens, yeah. yeah. So it's like it's not you could just kind of it just doesn't feel special. It doesn't have that epic feel of like Independence Day or even. 1998's Godzilla it just I don't know it feels like it's just missing something and like I said the acting isn't the best I gave this two and a half stars on Letterboxd so that's equivalent of a five out of ten film so right down the middle it's yeah, it's I, nothing special in my opinion I think you're a little harsh on it I mm. went I, I struggled between the three and a half and four I gave it the three and a half thank you just because the CGI is a little offensive <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, they, they, again, that, that that's the biggest thing there, and it, it's a little long. The, the the CGI not the greatest, or probably the worst I've ever seen, to be completely honest. The movie itself, I, I enjoyed the story. It was, you know, we got the happy ending. We have some heroes. Uh, that happy ending actually pissed me off. I wanted them to commit, and I forgot that they didn't. I thought that I was like, oh yeah, that's right, oh they do. Okay, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, come on. <laughs> you didn't want you wanted them all to die. I didn't want them all to die. I just put a bit of ballsier choice and a more likely scenario. I mean, then again, you have to defy a lot of belief with this as it is anyway. So, so we would put this in the science fiction Absolute, section. Absolutely, right? hundred percent. It's okay. literally science fiction. <laughs> so, There's action. Oh yeah, but it's a sci-fi action but film. Sci-fi action. Yeah, right. you know things you couldn't believe. Yeah, so we're gonna, we'll, we'll label that right under science fiction. Yeah. Um, if you haven't seen it yet, if you love disaster films like I do. Give it a watch. It's worth it. Um, at the very least, you'll you'll laugh at some bad CGI. But it's a it's a fun romp. It, it's worth a watch. Um, but let's talk about the 4K. Yeah, let's talk about that right now. So, like Matt was saying, this did have a previous Shout Select Blu-ray that was previously released. So, which it, we do not have. Which we don't. So we actually couldn't compare this to anything. And why don't you unpack that for them? Because I want to explain something. Okay. So. It is not a Shout Factory. Um, when you first brought it over and showed it to me, I was like, oh, we got a slipcover. But that explains it, because it's not Shout Factory. And Shout Factory has been a little mean to us with slipcovers. Yeah. But uh, when we pop off that slipcover, it is the same artwork on the inside, like usual. Mm -hmm. So pop that open. One disc. Which is, One disc. Which is no in line with Paramount. No disc art. Mm -mm. Yeah, even Top Gun Maverick had a plain black disc. Yeah, in. and they haven't been putting the pack and Blu-ray disc in lately. Which is fine. Yeah, which we're okay with as long as the price is within reason. And I don't remember, what is this, a $20 4K? Let's see what it's going for at this, I think I paid $21. $21.19 on Amazon. So for one disc, one 4K disc, we can be acceptable in the fact that there's only one disc in here. Although Paramount has been getting cheaper and cheaper, but they gave us a slip cover. Yeah, I would say don't pay any more than 20 bucks for this. I think this is a great movie in the $20 range. You know, the no disc art thing, that's a bummer. Same thing front and back, you know, so nothing, uh, nothing to see here as far as that, nothing special. 
But uh, let's talk visuals. Now, yes, this uh, has Dolby Vision and HDR10 on here, and I myself was not too, too impressed with it. I wasn't offended by anything other than the CGI, but that's not the people who transferred to this to 4K's fault. Right, yeah, so again, we do not have a previous Blu-ray to compare this to. Uh, I don't think it looked bad at all. There was nothing where I said, oh, this looks shitty, aside from the CGI. So I don't think it's the worst transfer ever. Again, I don't have a previous Blu-ray to compare it to, so I can't tell you if, if it's a, a fantastic upgrade. I can tell you that it looks just fine. No really real complaints no, with the transfer itself. Just nothing that's gonna blow you away. Don't expect to put this in your system <clears> and go, oh wow, that's that's beautiful looking. No, it's just, it kind of looks like a high-end Blu-ray. There were some scenes that looked really good, some scenes that looked worse than that, but it never dropped to a low quality, I would just say. You know, it's not the best looking movie to begin with, which, you know, you would think it would be, but it's really not. Yeah, I mean, with the Dolby Vision, I, I might be going out on a limb, but this is probably the best the movie has ever looked. Mm -hmm. um, that's but possible. that's not necessarily a good thing with the CGI because I'm sure if we watch this on DVD on a CRT, it might actually look a little better, be a little bit yeah. more forgiving on the CGI. So, you know, you, you got to weigh out those pros and cons. As far as audio goes, DTS 5.1 Master Audio sounded great. I actually thought that this was a phenomenal track. Now, I watched this in Matt's system, which is a little bit noticeably better than mine. But, man, the rears were getting some fucking power. I felt that, especially, that was, I, honestly, I was pretty blown away by the audio track, especially for a DTS HD 5.1. Now, I asked Matt if this is more in line with how he usually hears DTS tracks, because I don't watch movies with him all the time. Right. And, and he said about, that's about right, yeah, right? Yeah, it's on par, although, you know, this is an action, this is action-packed, there's a lot of explosions, there's, it, it's a good track, nonetheless, but... You know, it's not a dialogue-heavy movie where there's not going to be a lot going on in the background. So this is, I wouldn't say a reference piece or a show piece, but it, it's definitely going to give your system a workout. So if you have a decent surround sound system, it's going to sound fantastic. There were points in this where I didn't realize it was the movie, and I thought somebody was coming down the stairs that scared the shit out of me. Like, they're coming <laughs> that loud down yeah, the stairs. Yeah, that speaker all the yeah, way. Yeah, that got me a couple times, so. <laughs> yeah, that happens. Not an Atmos track. You know, I love when we get that Dolby Vision, Dolby Atmos combo. That's the, you know, that's the sweet spot we like. But perfectly fine. Doesn't need an upgrade at this point, I don't think, as far as the audio goes. Would we have liked it? Sure. Would it have brought more to the table? Maybe. Maybe. Yeah, but I don't see anything else. Can't could... confirm. No, I mean, I'm very happy with that audio track. Honestly, it's very damn impressive, especially since the visuals weren't, I would have expected, an average audio track. But now they went above and beyond. However, like I showed you, my, uh, oh, yeah, my player upscales. So uh, when I look at my stats, it reads the DTS Master Audio 5.1. But if you look at what's putting out, it convert my player converts that to a PCM 7.1. So I don't know if that improved our uh, listening experience, but that's just something to note on the equipment we're using. Yeah, just to make it as clear as possible. Now Matt, why don't you tell them about the extras on here? What extras? Exactly. There are no extras on here. Not a damn extra. So Not that... even a commentary. No. Uh, there might have been no. in the setup, right? Maybe, but like, I just saw languages. I didn't see anything. Yeah, I didn't think I caught a commentary no, track either. No, it doesn't either, say I'm anything. completely honest. Which I don't really mind that much. I'm not huge on the extras. I don't have enough time to dive into extras with the amount of movies and stuff we watch and the games I want to play. So... I really only dive into extras on like my top 10 favorite movies ever and I barely even touch the extras on those. So not putting extras in here is not going to be a deal breaker, at least for me. I can't imagine that this is someone's like favorite movie ever and no, they want but extras I, on it. But some I, people enjoy I, the extras and I understand that. I enjoy the extras and I, I, I get a little frustrated when there's none. Now. I don't ask, like, just to give it a little bit of more of a passing grade, I, I would like just some featurettes, like a couple interviews. Like, I just like to see what the actors and the director are thinking. A little bit would have been nice. You know, I, I, I just getting none just feels cheap and lazy. Now, given, again, the price, 
it's fair for a just get the movie out there kind of 4K. It's, you know, this isn't a collector's edition. There's nothing special about it. They're not charging you for it's something It's a nice special. slip cover. Yeah. I do, I, I do like the, yeah. the art on there. So it's really hard for me to grade this uh, totally because it's definitely cheaper than most 4Ks coming out that are brand new. And it feels like they knew what they had. So $21.00. Might be a little bit on the high end, but I'd say nineteen ninety nine yeah. is a sweet spot for this. If you can get it on sale for like fifteen, which this is a Paramount, so this will be probably included in all your holiday sales going forward. Yeah, I'm sure. But you gamble not if you're a slipcover guy. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, and it's got, a nice one. They get you by the balls with the slipcovers these days because yeah. only the first or maybe second runs get slipcovers, and then after that, good luck. But overall, including the film packaging, audio, no extras, and visuals, what would you give the core 4K? Give it a generous 7.5. 7.5. I'm going to be generous. I'm going to give it a 6 out of 10 just because I'm a little harder on them for not having the extras and I didn't enjoy the film as much as you. But still, 15 to 20 buck range. Definitely you can grab it, if you're, especially if you're a fan of the core. And if you're not, it's not a huge waste of time. You can watch this and still have some fun, I think. Mm hmm yeah, so anyway, guys, we hope you enjoyed our review of The Core. Uh, if you want to grab this through our Amazon affiliate link, it helps us out, and it doesn't cost any extra money for you. And another thing that helps this channel out is by you liking this video and subscribing to the channel, searching for us on all podcast services, giving us a five-star rating there. And after you're done doing all that, I want you to throw on your nicest heat-resistant suit, hopefully one that goes up to 9,000 degrees. And while you're down there in the core of this earth, I want you to tell everyone about Let's Talk Entertainment and Media. We'll be seeing you around.